let's talk about let's talk about what this deck is trying to do. What is Infinite Firesworn for those of you? Because it's been a really long time since I've played Infinite Firesworn. Um, and it's not a popular uh, it's not a popular archetype at all. So by infinite. The idea of infinite is you want to set up two or more of these Firesworn Scribes in the ranged row where uh, whenever you spawn one or more units on the battlefield, you gain one coin. So if you have two or more, you're gaining two or more coins every time you spawn a unit on the battlefield. And then you play Helveed in the front row. With a relatively empty front row, you play Helveed. It costs for his fee ability costs two, and he spawns a Firesworn Zealot at two power in that row. So you're paying two coins to spawn a two, and then you're getting two coins back because you have two Firesworn Scribes on your range row, right? So you're basically clicking Helveed for free every time because of the refund, and that will fill up the row. You'll have like a full row. How do you get more? space to keep clicking Helvid because Helvid's click it takes up a slot when you click him but it is coming for free you get more space by playing lonely champion you so your front row will look like this it'll have one lonely champion with immunity it'll have Helvid, and then it'll have space for seven up to seven maybe firesworn zealots and then every other turn your lonely champion with cooldown two can can absorb and consume basically all of the firesworn token power onto his immune body and then make you more space every two turns you can be able to click Helvid for free seven times um and then it gets even better if you have other synergy cards like fallen knights for example which have been double buffed uh recently to be five power five provisions it used to be four power six provisions you've also got other payoffs like um like what you call it there were the old version played internal fire priest whenever you spawn one or more units boost self by one these are these are kind of like alternative versions of fallen knights i used to play these and no fallen knights in my infinite fire sworn but now i think with with fallen knight being five for five versus four for four this is just better because this it's it's getting the power stat line right it's got the same stat line or equivalent stat line it's harder to remove because it starts at a higher power it's got veil these both of these units go tall this is not punishable by poison and it's also got intimidate which is an additional engine upside and fallen knight boosts by more than one if you spawn multiple units at the same time like with a congregate uh with a sorry yeah, what is this card called? Yeah, Congregation. When you play Congregation, Fallen Knight boosts by 3 plus 1 on the Intimidate. Whereas Eternal Fire Priest would only boost by 1. Because it doesn't matter how many units you spawn in one go. In one instance, if you spawn 4 units, you still only get 1 boost on uh, Eternal Fire Priest. So we're playing 2 of these Fallen Knights instead of 2 of the Fire Priests. And then... Um, you have... Yeah, I mean that's 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 like the basis of your combo. You can also add in something like townsfolk to um, boost self by one every time you gain coins. So like every time you spawn a unit, you're gonna gain one coin twice with your two firesworn scribes. Um, so townsfolk is another nice payoff. Uh, I think there's only room for one of them in this deck. And the big key piece that we're missing is Igor. How do you get more Firesworn Scribes? How do you how do you play more than two Firesworn Scribes so that you know if if they get removed, you can get more of them. You can res them. You can copy them. Igor is one good way to do it. Igor has this five fee ability that spawns a base copy of a Bronze Allied unit on this on this row, so you can Igor a Firesworn Scribe, and that spawns a unit which then triggers itself, which then gives you a coin refund. And you can use him more than once if you have coins. If you don't have coins, you can use him for insanity at least once. Because he's got six power and a fee of five only. And then Hemelfart is also a big part of this deck because Hemelfart can resurrect your Firestone Scribes in future rounds. Hey Luca. TGIF. Why Cove Leader? Okay. Cove Leader because um, you need a spender that goes tall rather than wide. Because you're going to end up with very limited board space with this deck. 
So Pirate's Cove gives you that guaranteed spender that goes tall. Um, it also spawns a unit, so you can combo it with Firesworn Scribes on the same turn that you play them to get some coins. Um, and it has some synergy with Damnation, which is another card that I was going to talk about next that is yet another way of getting these key engine pieces. So, like, Firestorm Scribe's super key, Helvede's super key, and Hemelfart's super key, because Hemelfart gets you more Firestorm Scribes. Well, Damnation can get all of these cards, right? You can, if you Damnation a 1, you can get Firestorm Scribe or Fallen Knight. If you Damnation a 6, you get Helvede, and if you Damnation an 8, you get Hemelfart. How Damnation works, destroy an allied unit and create and play a four provision cost Firesworn unit. Increase the provision value by one, by uh, by the power of the destroyed unit. So it depends on the power, not the provisions of the destroyed unit, and that increase increases the provision of the unit that you can create, the Firesworn unit that you can create. So looking at Firesworn units that can be created, you can't create any of the 4P units, um, because you can't destroy a zero. Zero would already be destroyed. So at f uh, if you destroy a one, there's four options, so you're going to miss one of them, but you have 75% chance to see a specific one that you want. We're really only looking for Firestone Scribe and maybe Fallen Knight. Um, if you destroy like a two, you can get like a t uh, Procession of Penance. If you destroy a six, you get Helvede. So Damnation allows you to play basically a second Helvede or a second Hemelfart. Alvid's really crucial to the infinite combo. He's like the key piece, right? Um, so you're often wanting to destroy a six to get Helvid. And how do you get a six? Well, Pirate's Cove can help you get a six. Pirate's Cove can you can play, click Pirate's Cove into Sea Jackal, which is a four. Immediately click it with two for two coins into two boost. You need to not have hoard though. You got to be careful about your hoard. Immediately click it to get a six and then play Damnation on that 6 power Sea Jackal to get a Hellbead. You played a homebrew version and used Damnation to spawn and play, yeah, Grand Inquisitor Hellbead, exactly. That's going to be your most common usage of Damnation is to get a second Hellbead, but you can also use it to get a second Hemelfart in some cases. Um, so this is kind of like your, your uh, core, your core engine, your core combo piece. And then you have um, some protection for your combo. So the idea, this is kind of where, I would say that the old version, you would see like the all-in meme version would probably play some of these, most of these cards, if not all of these cards. I think the Townsfolk is probably a cut in the all-in version, but Townsfolk is still very, very good combo card. Um, you can also like, it could be a backup target for Igor as well, potentially, to, to Igor Townsfolk. But this is where we start diverting from the all-in version and this more consistent version um, and more conservative version. It's going to play some protection for your combo pieces. The all-in version, the meme version that I played before, it didn't play protection. It just tried to overload, engine overload your opponent and make them run out of removal. You can also get St. Gregory from Damnation. Yeah, you got I think you got to kill a 10. To get St. Gregory from Damnation, it gives you the first form, but first form of St. Gregory can still be a lot of points. So, uh, protection is going to become in the form of Azar Javed, um, the best defender in the game in terms of protection, because it's harder to get through the two scarabs in one turn. And then you go, uh, and then you play Candle to, you know, further make the scarabs harder to get through. And then you play, and this is the interesting part, you play Mastermind. Mastermind to get Igor and Azar Javed on the same turn. And maybe already with a candle on the board that helps you protect the scarabs and boost the scarabs. Like, imagine that, right? Like, your opponent has a candle on the board, you don't have artifact removal, and then they go Siggy Mastermind into Defender Igor. Like, what are you going to do? And then there's like a four power scarab and a five power scarab, one with one armor each. And then Igor's already on the board. There's no way you're getting through all that. Most decks will not have the possibility of getting through all that to answer the Igor right away. Then next turn you play Fire Sworn Scribe, spawn one with Igor, and then um, and then 
they're at that point they're probably still trying to get past the second scarab right and then it's just over and then you get a third scribe on the on the next turn and then you play your um lv and then you're gaining coins every time you spawn a unit you also want to have like set up your lonely champion before then so it can be clicked on the same turn that you play the Helvi. Do we play Novograd? Yeah, we're getting there. So, um, Mastermind, uh, you want to play King of Beggars with Mastermind as King of Beggars, like Mastermind gives you a lot of the tribute that gets, that activates the King of Beggars, that makes him good. King of Beggars is also just one of the best cards of the faction. So this is another departure from like the all-in version that I used to play. It didn't play King of Beggars, the best card in the faction. So I think this version might be a little bit more successful. Um, and then it plays another good card with Novigrad. Novigrad. Where's Novigrad? There it is. Um, and then we're looking at just like consistency stuff. This deck wants a lot of consistency. Royal Decree to help you get um, Mastermind, really. Or Hemelfart or Helvede. And we want to make sure we keep only one Salamandra, one Cut-Ups in the deck so that Mastermind guarantees this combo on the same turn. You want to have two threats. It's also okay if Mastermind plays, like, say, um, Igor and Scribe on the same turn, assuming that the Azure Javid is played separately with a Candle. That would also be fine. Or you could go Scribe and Azar Javed. That would also be fine. And then play Igor the next turn. But Scribe, because it only has a Firesworn tag, and everything in this deck, like there's so many Firesworns in this deck, it's not very guaranteed to um, get a Scribe or like a Hemelfart off of Mastermind. So if you want to be consistent, you want to be safe, you want to have these two cards in the deck. Hmm... And then there's like, there's seven cards left at this point. They're going to be mostly low provision cards. Um, I haven't put in the Damnation. That's where I was looking at where my provisions came from. Um, Damnation we talked about, but we didn't click on. So that's in there. And then we have six, four more, six, four P cards left. Space for six, four P cards left. Um, this is where I think you could diverge a little bit in terms of building the deck uh, i'm just going to play what kerpeton linked me first and then see how if we want to change anything but he plays one mahakam ale to unlock his engines he plays an even tide plunder because you often want a spender in a third round where your leader is only a spender in two rounds and not really your two charge leader is really a spender in only one round because very often you're going to want to use one of your leaders for damnation. And then once you damnation the leader, um, Sea Jackal, you can't spend on it. Right. Uh, and then he plays two Congregates, which, sure, it's good. It has a lot of synergy with. Congregate is a six point card at its base, at its core. It's a six point card, but it gives you four points on Fallen Knights and one point on Firesworn Scribe. And yeah, four points on Fallen Knight is a, like the really big thing. So like, if you have one, this this plays for ten points if you have one Fallen Knight on the board, basically. And then last choice for four P bronze is a weird one. He plays Line of Credit, two lines of credit. Not sure about this one. Um, he said that he uses it on, like, a Novograd or a Candle at the end of, like, once you don't need the Candle anymore, you use it on Candle. Or he uses it on Novograd near the end of the game. Or you can use it on, like, False Siri, which is kind of niche, but really cool when you use it on False Siri. You can use it to create space. Um, for example, like, a lot of times you want your front row to really be um those nine units that i talked about like you want your front row basically to be only lonely champion Helvede, and all the rest of the space for tokens seven tokens so your other units like all these other units hemelfart fallen knights townsfolk scribes and um congregation zealots 
Eternal Fire Disciples, they all uh, Defender, Igor, they all have to go on the range row, and there's not enough space. Uh, Mastermind even has to go on the range row. Novograd, the artifacts, and the Conjurer's Candle have to go on range row. There's not going to be a lot of space there. So Line of Credit can kind of like, you can use Line of Credit on one of the Firesworn Zealots in the range row to clear up space and get you some coins, which um, those coins can then be used for uh, Mastermind to tribute the Mastermind. So that, that's what I was wondering too. I've never played this deck yet. I was thinking like, how do we tribute the Mastermind? This deck is not going to have a lot of tags, right? Like outside the Firesworn tag, it can get one thing maybe from Eventide Plunder if you're lucky. It can get Salamander, like you, it can't, like you have Salamander and Cutups, but those are the targets that you want to pull with Mastermind. So you're not going to have them before you play the Mastermind. You're also not going to have the King of Beggars out before you play the Mastermind because he needs to, you need to tribute 12 to get King of Beggars. So like maybe nine, maybe seven or five are coming from Mastermind. And then you have three coming from Azar Javed. So that's uh, may maybe like eight to 11 coming from Azar Javed. And then you need to like tribute a Firesworn Scribe at some point to get the extra couple. You don't really have that much uh, tribute. But you don't actually even need to, honestly, you don't need King of Beggars to come out for this deck. You're just playing King of Beggars to get the refund. Uh, when he comes out, he might also block a spot in the front row for a token. And that's where, like, you maybe even line of credit the King of Beggars. Do you need Collusion if you have Mastermind, or does it, or it doesn't matter? You don't have to have Collusion. You, like, often do play Collusion with the Mastermind, but you don't have to play Collusion in order to get Mastermind's tribute benefit. Okay. So, this deck thins a total of 1, 2, 3... Uh, maybe three, maybe four, a uh, four here, right? And then that's, is that it? I think it thins four. Not a lot of thinning. It only thins four. There's going to be five cards that we don't play. That's going to be like Ale, Line of Credit, Line of Credit, Congregation, Congregation. Maybe like the Fire Disciples. I'm just trying to think what my plan is in round one with this deck. So obviously if we get to round three, we want to do the infinite fire sworn combo in round three, which is like, like we want, what cards do we want in round three? We want like candle, we want mastermind into these two. We want Helvede, we want lonely champion. We want Hemelfart. We want a fire sworn scribe. Kind of like, like I think I think minimum five cards. Minimum five cards in round three, but like preferably six plus. Because these fallen knights will scale really, really well. Townsfolk will also scale very well. And the more turns you have, the more times you can click this Nolan Champion and, and get another 14 points for basically free. Excommunication might be a consideration, yes. Excommunication for um, for for consistency and also to move to to destroy a thing off your board. Maybe you could play that. It's really cheap. XCOM is really cheap. I wonder why Kerpeden didn't play it. Because you don't actually thin that much, so you're often like it might you might miss a gold pretty often. I would maybe consider playing excommunication instead of townsfolk. Um, I, I want to. I'm actually curious. When's the last time I played Infinite Firesworn? I want to. I wanted to actually now compare the lists. Infinite Firesworn St. Gregory. There was one from 10.12, like a year and a half ago. <laughs> okay, let me see. 10.12. This, you know, this was more all in. It played a lot more, con it spent way more provisions on consistency. It played. Alyssa and Decoy. Alyssa for Damnation. Decoy for like Helvede or Hemelfart after you were done with it. How many tribute do you have to trigger King of Beggars? Well, King of Beggars requires 12. 
uh, we don't have to get Tringenbergers out, like I was saying. Um, but we have we have potential to do 12. We have three from uh, Defender, two from uh, two from each Firesworn Scribe in the deck. When you play from hand, you contribute them. So that's up to seven, and then like up to nine more for Mastermind, but realistically up to like five or seven more from Mastermind. Uh, so I'm looking at this, and... Okay, Vial of Forbidden Knowledge we played in the old version to help protect the Firesworn Scribe in round one. So that's something to consider. We played a Smuggle just to like get some coins. And then we played Control, Dorigary Payday for Control. And then like everything else is just consistency. Okay. So yeah, we could consider playing like we didn't play Excommunication back then either, but I don't actually know if Excommunication did what it does now back then in a year and a half ago. Why don't we play Excommunication in this deck? Yeah, this 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 had the old version had Bank, Oniro, Decree, Arcane Tome. The old version maybe didn't play Excommunication because it already had all those things for round one consistency. Excommunication is going to be a round three consistency type of tool. But because we only thin, like, four cards max, most likely three, like, the excommunication of it might still not be good. Because they're gonna, if you thin three, let's say, let's say you've thinned the Royal Decree and the Mastermind in round, uh, by round three. Like, you already thinned those sometime in round three, in the middle of round three. You still have, there's still six cards left in your deck. Your excommunication only shows you half of those, so it's, like, not that consistent. Anyways, let's let's play it out. Hand buff with curse scroll. This is much better. You love to see this. You don't need. They might play lock. You don't need two line of credits. You just play this guy. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Are we gonna do the infinite combo this turn? Or this round, we don't have any lonely champions, but we do have a royal decree. But I want to save the royal decree for mastermind. We really cannot afford to miss mastermind because it, it's basically equivalent to two two other golds. It's kind of like three golds in one. It's, just, it's his himself, which is two plays in one, and then you get the defender and the Igor. And then we also don't have Cyrus, which is pretty huge too. Not afraid, you should be. So if we don't have if we don't have access to um if we don't have access to the lonely champion i think our game plan um, does our game plan change a bit let's go let's go with candle i actually don't really love the candle being in the being on the board in round 3 I think it takes up this extra spot, which is kind of bad. Special prize, just for you, uh oh, love. engines. Our deck plays zero control. Uh, if, if this is like some sort of Renfree, he shouldn't be. Come he should have like a Geralt of Rivia. Don't take this sword at all. Renfree would have a Geralt of Rivia, but he wouldn't really be able to answer this otherwise. Oh, I should have played this Rain Row, by the way. Do I have Tall Punish for Zaglaeus? No, there's zero control. Coin or sod off. He's Golden Necker. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Aglaeus is Golden Necker now, right? Is is nine P now, I believe. Abandon your false guns. I'm thinking about protecting this. I think we'll do that. And then next we'll play Fire Swan Scribe. Yield and save me some time. Tribute. Who spilled my ink? Confess or be damned! 
I think I'll give him a pass if he wants it. I don't love having these two in a long round anyways. He's playing Golden Necker now. So is he an Alyssa? Double Golden Necker? Circle of Life? I'll do what I can. Trap? Uh oh. It's nice to lose one point to kill some to be able to target. Oh, sticky situation. This card is really underrated. But he used the spring version to boost a unit in his hand by six. He used the spring version instead of the win round one version. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. He should use it for the win round one version. And that helps him get the short round three or the last say in round three for his Aglaeus. Hmm. I'm not going to play this Fire Sworn Scribe, I think, because I don't have the infinite combo. I'll have too many coins if I play this. And I just... Well, I have Candle that spends a lot. Um. Okay, let's play it. My last quill. We can play everything except Royal Decree and Helvede. Not a lot of points, though. Is he going to Yorbeth? He might Yorbeth. Yeah, he can play Yorbeth. Yorbeth's 9p. He can Yorbeth and use it again. So, like, I think winning the round is really good for us. Even if his... Let's say his Aglaeus gets super tall, right? If we win the round, we can f we can try to force his Aglaeus in round in round two. Ring of favor. You are worthy neither of mercy nor forgiveness. So if I play this congregation, I'll be at eight coins. If I understand correctly. You, yes, you! Have you made your offering? I think we should get ahead. I think we should get ahead now. We are ahead, right? Actually, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't. Oh, we got a big card. Why is this so big? Oh, because it got bounced from Torque. Farseer targeted the Torque, which bounced to the Dunka. Can someone explain like I'm five sticky situation? Uh, yeah. Hold on. So sticky situation, there's two forms of it. The simpler form is the one that he used. Oh, he get we get the Aglaeus now. Interesting. The simpler form is the form that he used, which um, boosts a unit in your hand by six, and then it doesn't do anything. Um, the complicated form is the ambush form. Uh, when you trigger it by playing a unit with four or less power, it flips over and starts boosting adjacent units at the end of your turn by two power each turn. So it's a four point per turn engine, assuming that it's next to two other th units. But these values, they decrease every time uh, your opponent passes. So uh, by in round two, it'll only boost adjacent units by one each. And by round three, it boosts adjacent units by zero each. So you can't, you don't have any engine value in round three. And then uh, the hand buff is it boosts by five in round two, four in round three. I would play again. I feel like we can play again. You, 
Yes, you. Have you I know I'm not ahead money? now, but like we need 20 points, right? If he passes here. I'm pretty sure I can do that. <sighs> Royal decree. <sighs> Crap. I'm getting put to the test. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's like this. That one. He venerates not the fire. Now I think it's oh shit. Now I think it's this. Then I need eleven. And then I think it's this. Drive off the mages and their foul. Fucking easy NA math. A royal decree for a disciple, though. Uh, I don't know if I like this, because now we don't draw a mastermind, we lose. And he has Siri Nova carryover, which is also kind of bad for us. Okay, we drew the mastermind. How many coins do I have right now? Um, Jesus, I think I got to get rid of this to try to draw like something that generates coins. That's good. We have zero coins right now. We want a longer round. I could play with this hand. We could play with this hand, kind of. Mm, actually, no, we can't because I don't have coins. I can't play with this hand because I can't. I don't have coins to tribute Mastermind. Although he doesn't really have removal, maybe we don't need Defender. That gets me coins, but I need something to kill with this. And we don't want two lonely champions, I think. Okay, that could also give us coins. Illusions. You yet to see what they can accomplish. Oh god, that's removal. That's movement. Oh, that's scary. That's very scary. Hopefully, hopefully he just clicks it for Bountiful Harvest. Like, we'll just give him an opportunity to click it for Bountiful Harvest, like, right now. Right-head Sparley! Nigh is the time of the sword and he doesn't axe. click it. Okay. Hmm. Give what we demand and will not harm a hair on your wench's head. I'm gonna do that so that this doesn't die to uh, rebuke. We have another leader anyways. I have seven spaces in the back. I need I need like four spaces. Okay, he's gonna try to kill it. Offering. Damn, okay. Yeah, he still has torque. I have two tags. So right now this costs five. I'm gonna go blunder now. <sighs> maybe what I do is, like, maybe I should even just play Mastermind without Tribute just to get the Azar and skip Igor.
damn it. This at least gives me a tag. This also gives me a tag. I mean, would he play poisons? Doesn't look like he's playing poisons, right? That's an elf? Elf can't get poisons? He should have a Sheldon, maybe? Hit armor? Damn. Didn't hit armor. Now we have coins. This is gonna take three coins. Three coins. And we lead her. We need three coins. But Azar and Igor, Azar and Igor take up like four, four spaces on their own. Maybe I don't tribute the Igor. Maybe we don't tribute the Igor because like four spaces on their own. Sheldon is under ten provisions. Yes, way under. Four spaces on their own. Three spaces on their own, and then five spaces left. Four spaces left. Uh, it. Not sure for what just yet, but... I think I gotta play this front row. And now, time to settle things. Bad spells I think we don't tribute this. Allow me to show you. We don't have that many points. They'll not leave here alive. Okay. Shoot. The fire oh. cleanses. I overprofited Gold shines one. brightest in the presence of fire. Oh, my wrist is killing me. Hey, Sovereign. He's still got a huge Torque and a huge Sheldon. We're pretty, we're pretty much lost. Twenty-nine point Sheldon. one damn heat. Okay, so this is going to get me. Uh, we want Fallen Knight for points. We gotta do that first, so there's space for the Fallen Knight to come out. And then we do this on the Fallen Knight for points. Because we can't do anything with extra coins. Because our Jackal died. And then we play that, and then we pick this a bunch. Not winnable, I don't think. Unfortunately, not winnable. His Torque should be... His Torque should be just as big as his Sheldon, I think. If only we had a poison. Well, 31. We're up 31. Oh my. No way. No freaking way. We actually drew. Oh my god. After all, that was a draw. Do you see how many points we played in the last turn? We would have won if we had more space. If the mastermind didn't have to go in the front, we would have won. I. We keep having. Hey, Moshcraft, thank you for the raid. We're having a lot of row space issues with this deck. Hmm. Like, what you want to happen is you want to play a czar to protect your engines, but then you kind of want your opponent to kill your scarab. Like, because it's too slow. It takes them too long to kill the scarab and your engines, but you want them to kill your scarab so that they they, they make space. Uh, get raided. Hey, Fire Tablet. Does the last game go on YouTube? Probably. Oh, hey, Mosh. 
They're just telling me to do this, so here it is. I gotta run though, have a great stream. Okay, see ya Mosh, thanks for the raid. All right, let's take a look at, at Moshcraft casually throwing down his 50,000 channel points and then leaving. <laughs> and then just piecing out. I will yoink those channel points though. Um, beta went with three rows was good. Sure. Uh, I think homecoming is better though. Like in terms of in terms of like flexibility and design space, I I still think Beta Gwent was just more nostalgia than necessarily good game design. Um, okay, it's a Rackus Swarm Golden Necker. Uh, Frightener. I guess Frightener is activated by Glusty Warp. Uh, and plus your leaders, plus your passive. Um, Itter. Just throwing an Itter out and hoping that he sticks. That's what it kind of looks like. Pred Dive with Golden Necker seems fun. Like, who knows? Maybe we RNG into a one point Pred Dive. Um, when we play our Golden Necker. Double Ren Warriors. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about this deck, man. This looks like a really smelly pile. Super stinky. I don't I don't see anything unfair about this deck. And you're also playing like these kind of like elder bears kind of cards like itter with no protection ran warrior with no protection this looks like a copium deck like hope my opponent doesn't run control you prefer three or two rows um i i prefer three i think i prefer three rows but i also don't mind two rows okay we're gonna keep playing this uh if you want you guys hear that Somebody, somebody busting caps outside. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that was a birthday balloon that just popped in our in our living room. No, it was a birthday balloon that popped. Tomorrow's Leo's birthday. He's turning two, and uh, we got some balloons for him. You don't think the third row added much to the game? Don't make me laugh. I mean, I think it added a little bit more than the second row, but um, I think I I think I like the rows being more about positioning, like against row punish, rather than like oh certain cards can only be locked to playing melee row, certain cards can only be locked to playing range row. I don't like that aspect that much, but I like the idea of like. Do I row stack for my own upside combo, or do I um, divert the rows to play around our my opponent's row punish? That sort of thing. Was weather card the problem in three row Gwent? Uh, yeah, old weather was really badly designed. Old weather that like set everything to one power, unless you clear the weather was super, super badly designed. Extremely binary. All right. Good old warriors. Again, I'm missing scribe. Kind of frustrating. I wonder how long I can go without playing a unit. <laughs> I guess only two turns. Do you miss everyone dry pass with 10 cards in round one? No, not at all. Not at all. Hmm. Hmm. 
I discarded an invader. Townsfolk could be replaced with like excommunication. Or maybe some sort of control card or some sort of, con yeah. Mm. So I, I, I want to try something. I think we want to try something. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest. The hell is this? Oh god. I'm roping! The eternal fire burns. The eternal fire protects. Uh I was thinking about using Mastermind this turn to go and get Azar and, like, maybe a Scribe. Chances are kind of good for, like, a Scribe or a Fallen Knight. I want to play, like, Engines in this round because this is when his... With his uh, we want to take advantage of the fact that we're red coin this game. We want to win on even. But I also don't know if I should use my Mastermind. I think Mastermind is like the really I only protection. Like the only way to, to dodge um, removal in round three. So we want to we want to win this without playing Mastermind somehow. And I need Candle for that. We don't have Candle. That's the big problem here. That's the real problem here is we don't have Candle. No, I need a Candle. Um... Hmm. I should have clicked this. I don't want to play a scribe at six power because it's going to die to gutting slash. Oh? Well, he's not going to have anything tall, right? Satisfaction guaranteed. No refunds, mind. I haven't played any fall game. You loved your Axeman deck, yeah. Axeman, like I actually like three rows actually ma makes a really big difference for something like Axeman weather, right? Or rain. The TV series is surprisingly bad. I just read something earlier today that said it was not. It was like pretty good. Mm, I lost a tag there. We need twelve points to get ahead. I was thinking about taking that Oxenfurt because the Oxenfurt can actually buff this Firesworn Scribe to seven on the turn that it's played. I really do need to stick a scribe. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna play Townsfolk. And Townsfolk, does it get us ahead? I need 12? This is worth six? Okay, I can do it. Oh, that's stitching. Zeracanian, is it? This gets me ahead. I spend all my coins. There's nothing surprising about a show based on video game being bad. Uh, I think I read something like it was the highest viewer, highest viewers or yeah, viewership streaming debut. At least for like Amazon Prime or something. On IMDb, it has an 8.6 out of 10 currently, which uh, is very high. But it usually shows debut pretty high, and then they fall. Mm. Mm. Oh, 
What do I do? I need um I need six to get ahead. I need six to get ahead. I'm short just like a little tiny bit. Fame and coin. All you need what to push a man to murder. It matches your eyes. We're ahead. Yes, we are ahead. It's kind of hard for him to kill a one now. With no Blood Eagle, with no Brockfar Warrior. Oh, the King of this Beggars Synergy! Crazy. Holy... The King of Beggars Synergy. Um... Okay, and I can Damnation one of these ones, too. Ooh. I'm trying to think if I should click this. I think we- I think we click this for... For, um... I think we click this once for Primal Savagery considerations and then we still have two coins and we can tribute the next one too off the of damnation oh man i might actually win on even without using mastermind here that would be crazy that would be very good but we have used our igor but that's okay Get the care troll, nice. We'll greet him, we will. But fire and iron. He uses full leader just to get ahead. Novograd is such a weird card to punish. It's it's so good, it's so hard to answer. Still ahead. Kills a townsfolk? Okay. I think that's the wrong one. I think that's the wrong thing to kill. If... Oh my god, he's... What? Okay, here's the problem. My problem is... That if we play the Helvede, we ha and we've already played the Damnation, then we have no way of getting Helvede anymore. And then our whole infinite, like, we have no infinite plan for round three anymore. But, like, I don't want to pass here. I also don't want to play Mastermind. If we play Mastermind, um... Yeah, if we play Mastermind, we have to play the Azar. Or we could Mastermind... We could Mastermind without Tribute. I'm running out of time. I gotta... I gotta do you something. You, you, the yes, of you! Magic have you made your no offering? By denying penance, you confirm your guilt! Ah, uh, could have done more. But whatever, it's fine. I was thinking maybe we mastermind without tribute so that we just play a, a, a fire sworn instead of the we don't play a salamander we just play a fire sworn and then we go round three conjurer's candle into azar javed into uh, infinite combo in round three how do we want to do this do we want to value bleed do we want a 2 0?
maybe a 2-0? Perhaps? This hand looks fine for a 2-0. I would rather have, like... Maybe a czar in my... Oh, no, I don't want a czar in my hand. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's fine for just a 2-0. Okay. Um... Emil Fart. I think we're gonna play this front row. I think we're gonna play all of our units range row. We're gonna get Defender plus something. Where did he play? He, had, what, he played a. He discarded a stunning blow? Jesus. War of Clans. He has one War of Clans left. Use his. Not sure for one just yet, but. I need seven coins for this, right? Save your praise for others. I couldn't give a shit. Oh, nice. That's pretty good. My last quill. Who do I spy? King of Beggars on the wrong row. Grand plan will stand no weaklings. I see no role in it for you. Mm. This Hemel Fart is not doing too much. What does what does this helm fart even get us? It gets us a scribe on the wrong row. It gets us a disciple probably. Helm fart probably gets us a disciple. What's it gonna take? I fish that. How dare you, Faust? Easy. Let me candle that. Nice. That's game. That's a two zero. Right? We candle that. He can't kill it. Champion's charge is gone. Use it in round one on on a townsfolk. Wow. I did not think that this was going to be the, the result of the line that we took all the way back at the start of round one. Where we decided to go in, commit to round one, to winning round one on even, without using the Mastermind. And it went actually all the way down to that, that one card. Had Mastermind, saved it for round two, and then comboed it with a Azar. Like, everything had to be done right there. We had to mulligan the Azar in round one, rather than the Igor. We got pretty good draws though. Like we did get a pretty good draw in round two. Naturally, like we used the Royal Decree in round one, and we naturally drew into our key golds. Line of credit there is for coin generation, so that you can tribute the Mastermind, or you can like pay for tributes on, uh, on the scribes, and it's also for making space, because this deck runs out of space. Just great. Pincer maneuver, Melly Telly. Mm. Ah, no scribes. No scribes are so bad. Hmm. I think this will be a game where maybe we go for a scribe and uh, maybe we go for a scribe in round one on Royal Decree. That's a Melissa type of card. Hmm. Why does he open that? He needs to curse scroll to get his. He needs to curse scroll or leader to get his snowdrop or. Or Istrid is what I'm thinking. Hey Yahtzee, two day watch streak. Hello, hey Kafka. 
Okay. What does Melitale have for removal? Like, pretty much nothing, right? I think pretty much nothing. They, they play, like, Epidemic or Spores, and then that's it. And then their other removal is, like, stuff that they can get from Melitale spawning. There's the Dragonborg and the Istrid. History lies buried here. Do not look now, my lady. Nobody's gonna be answering anything. Or I mean Yeah. I guess like technically we could get poison. We did get double poison that one game, one from Novograd and one from Eventide Plunder, but it's not happening in this game. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. We're gonna we're gonna commit the Igor in this round. Oh man, it's gonna be two solitaire matchups. I'm playing solitaire, he's playing solitaire. None of us are playing a single card of control. <laughs> okay, um let's do this now. Officials time out. Mop up the blood sleep. Scribe, army, jackal, fart. No, we don't need to fart, I don't think. You mean Helvede, right? Probably damnation instead of Helvede. I, like you like I think. <laughs> Shouldn't we fart? This disciple, I've, I'm a little unsure of what I'm, maybe I'm like, line of crediting the disciple at some point. I'm not sure what we do with this. I like, I, I don't like the disciple. I don't like the congregation. It'd take up too much space if we're going to play Helvede. Oh, he's not greeting the Istrid anymore. He's just going to play Istrid now. Click Istrid now. Could have greeted it more. Like if I could answer it, I would have answered it right now, right? Um, so, I think it's this, yes, you. Have you made then your this, offering? then, uh, how do I get a six to damnation? I have to see Jackal? Maybe I can get one from Eventide Plunder? I think we're going to do this first. Go I walk through the valley of monsters. I fear OPIG is no sus? Evil. Oh, like some sort of Chinese bot selling link or something like that. Uh I'm an officer and a gentleman. Wow. I this guy has a really nice hand. He hasn't used any of his leader charges yet. But I don't think he's shuffled Militale yet either. Okay, so I think it's even tied plunder now. We want to play Helvede soon. Okay. We go for this failed experiment. That gets us a six for damnation. We get another one of. Wait. I don't need to click this. Poison? What about poison? There's no poison on, on, on our... Our opponent doesn't play poison. I think we do this now. Oh my god. Four... Four scribes. I need a spender though. I'm gonna have to play Jackal from leader as a spender. Because we're getting two, we're getting net two, we're gaining two coins every time we. Up the tree you go, lad! Quick now! Retrieve my bolt. 
What does Scribe do? Uh, on the range roll, whenever you spawn one or more units on the battlefield, gain one coin. That's what Scribe does. Okay, so... Dude, this again? What? Three more copies? Wait, how can we... You're saying we can high roll poison him? Wait, how do we high roll poison him? Huh? What am I missing? How will we get another poison here? Oh, with with Igor. Oh, we can Igor another poison. Holy shit! That's that's so good. But if the ring won't come off, I can just take the whole hold on. Finger. No, I, I think I, I, I'm running out of time. Dude. <laughs> no. I shouldn't have. I got distracted by the freaking poison comment. There are things in the universe of which you can It does get poison on deploy. Better. Yeah, it wouldn't even have worked. It deploys poison. So it wouldn't have gotten poison on it. Dude, chat totally fucking debated me. And I lost like 50 points <laughs> from roping. Oh, so bad. So, so, so bad. I actually think here that we... I think here we get another Sea Jackal because I'm... I think we get another Sea Jackal. Because I already have so many coins. And I just don't want to go too tall on one unit. Yes, you! Have you made your offering? Remove his cow, then his ears. Oh shit, I could be boosting more. Ugh. Well, I haven't played a card? You, yes, you! Have you made your offering? <laughs> Uh, okay. But I mean, I did miss a lot of points because the turn that I clicked Lonely Champion, I didn't do anything with it. I didn't even fill the roll the first time once. To hit the mark, we aim above the mark. I'm an officer and a gentleman. Uh, my hand is too good. That is another problem that I have. My hand is too good. I should have probably taken the... No, I, I couldn't... No, I couldn't do the poison because it doesn't gain it on deploy. But maybe he maybe he can't play anymore? Maybe he can't play anymore out of this? And I, I, I should be able to easily do 30-something points this, this turn. Out of space. Last quill. When I click this, I I net gain four. That one, he venerates not the fire. So it's it's click each jackal <laughs> once, you click a hellbeed once, click each jackal fight? once, click a hellbeed once. By denying penance, you confirm your. <laughs> Oh man, okay. Points, baby. Um, do we use the rest of our coins? I think we just use the rest of our coins. Dude, what if he has an epidemic or spores right now? Oh, easy. Easy win on even. I think I should not have used the rest of my coins. 
Could have had like one more coin carry over. Um, I was worried that like he would discard and shuffle the Militale. I didn't know if it was like an AOE boost. What's his Militale at? I have not been paying attention. Okay, we still have... Oh, we still have so good... Oh, that's such a good draw! I'm gonna mulligan and take a risk because if we if we brick we just try pass. Okay. I don't actually want this because he has no control. Yeah, I want Novigrad, but it's not like absolutely necessary. In fact, I think like I think these cards are all better than Novigrad. Townsfolk, Firestorm, Scribe, Fall of Night, Fall of Night are all better than Novigrad. These engines. Um I believe we should just dry pass. I believe we should just dry pass. Maybe we should play the defender anyways. Just in case there is something like an epidemic or spores. It's not like we have... Like, our mastermind has to play the defender. It, we only have fire swing cards and king of beggars otherwise. He just spawned a six... So he's going to AoE boost 3 next. Discard the teleportation. He used his last leader charge. That's huge. That's huge. He has like no leader charges left. Like this is going to be a really, really good win. Really, really easy win, I think. He probably had some unplayable cards. Like what happened to his mentors? Did he play all of his mentors? Probably had like reinforcements, teleport, tele like those sort of stuff. Mm, this is a bad card, I think. Oh, I have to mulligan Azar, don't I? I have to mulligan Azar. And then... I could keep this hand, so I don't brick King of Beggars. It'd be kind of sad to brick King of Beggars. This Disciple is really bad, though. Okay, nice. That's very good. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. I have another Fire Sworn in the deck. Yeah, Townsfolk would be best. Oh no. Okay, Jermaine is a little bit of a scare. Just a tiny little bit of a scare. For Jermaine. He he will he probably can't get AoE boost four, but he can get AoE boost three, most likely, but it still shouldn't be enough to beat us. Don't ever expect your opponents to line up. No way he has removal, right? <laughs> oh man. What do I play here? I think we go I think we go Fallen Knight. How low we have fallen. How low we've fallen. What the hell are these? Bone splinters? Kikimori worker spawns units? But I can't. I'll make two halflings out of you. I have now three tags. Three tags. I don't think we tribute the defender. Dragons, tis our nightly duty. There's that AOE boost three. Like now we go for a defender. Defender plus fallen knight. We tribute the mastermind, but we don't tribute the defender. Um, this takes three slots, so we have three slots left. <sighs> oh, shit. 
We have a problem again. I have a problem again. With space. I think we do this first. That one! He venerates not the fire! Now, where's that thesaurus? Now I have three spaces left in the back. And I can... I almost think we don't play Azar. I think we don't tribute this and we don't play Azar. We just play it for Fallen Knight. Because I, I need space. This has to go back. And then these these two can go back. Like the Azar is just taking up space that we can be hell eating for. Yeah, line of credit can be used to free up space, sure, but Townsfolk doesn't have a tag, doesn't have a gang tag, so we can't take it from Mastermind. Otherwise, I would do that. Up the tree you go, lad! Quick now! Retrieve my bolt. What? Three more copies? Who spilled my ink? Confess and be damned! I should play Helvede next turn so that I could click this twice. Far can bring out another champion? There's no champion in the graveyard. Oh, lonely champion. Yeah, I can bring... Oh, I can bring out a lonely champion. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually good points. It brings out a lonely champion. So then what do I do here? <laughs> uh, shit. I'm going to rope. I gotta hurry, Mr. Roper. Yeah, I know. Okay, I think it's I think it's this. Into this. Bollocks. That was my last Into quill. this. Into this. Into this. Into this. this oh, I'm well. gonna roll. without checking. It's on the you, list of Yes, terms. you have you made your offering. You, yes, you! Have you made your offering? I'm not gonna click this. I'm just gonna wait. Because if I click it now, I don't get to click this and then... Wait, actually... I should have clicked it. I should have clicked it. What am I doing? It be the sun it's fine. It's fine. We win. <laughs> it's fine. We win. Woo! Holy cow. Oh my god, dude. My brain. These Yesterday and today we've been playing some extremely big brain overload decks. This deck is crazy, yeah. You have your balance console. No, I think it's still early. But maybe next week. I haven't thought about balance console at all. I did read Lirio's article. I skimmed like what Burpeton posted. Um, I think Lyrio's article is really good. I agreed with a lot of what he said. Scribe is the most important card in this deck, yes. I think the play was spawn another knight in the front row. Hmm, yeah, probably. I think my biggest worry there for round three is that he has an epidemic to kill the Sea Jackal. If he kills Sea Jackal, I think we could lose that. Because without the Sea Jackal, I guess without the Sea Jackal, we still have points on the immune fall, uh, lonely champions. And we have f points on the fallen knight, I guess. Still, maybe still a win. Uh oh, guerrilla tactics. No one plays Epidemic? I play Epidemic in my, in my um, Melissa deck. Movement is going to be really bad. It's going to be a big problem. Uh, 
this hand is also really weird. This hand sucks. This hand's super bad. We don't have Townsfolk, we don't have Scribe, we don't have Royal Decree, we don't even have Fallen Knight. We have none of our engines that benefit from spawning stuff. I really don't like giving up the round like this without making him use any of his removal. He's going to save all of his leader charges for when we actually need to win a round, rather than making him... I'd rather waste... I want him to waste leader charges. Um, okay, he hits the one, and once he hits the one... Once he hits the one, we damnation into, into a scribe. Ooh, that's an interesting plan. Once he hits the one, we damnation yes, into a scribe. Have you made your offering? I kind of like that plan. You guys think he plays a lock? He could play a lock, right? If I must die, I will die in glorious battle. I guess we don't click this yet, because I want him to make a one. I think we're going to play the Igor in this round. But not the Defender. Is what I'm thinking. Assuming that the assuming that the scribe that comes off of damnation sticks. You can run, you can hide, but I'm going to get Right here, you. one of these two. One of these two in the middle. Yeah. Okay. I damnation right now. I can't tribute. I can't tribute. Should I play a Condor's Candle first? Play a Condor's Candle first. That one. He venerates not the fire. It's better. Not, you better not <laughs> snipe the one now. Just do it bit for the revolution. No! Okay, now hit it. Make another one. Make another one right here. On the right. Okay, armor. He's playing Milva. It looks like Milva Shiru. Um, I haven't played against Milva Shiru in a while. Um, they play like a Frenzy Dow, right? They have Skirmishers for damage as well. Mm. You are worthy neither of mercy nor I mean, forgiveness. It's starting to get kind of late to play these um, scribes. <clears throat> Does Crumb work with Tatterwing? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I wonder what order they do it in. If Tatterwing sets Crumb to 1 first, and then Crumb sets himself to 20... Then it would work, but if Crumb sets himself to twenty, and then Tatterwing sets himself sets Crumb to one, then it would not work. This is the last unit I've played. I've gone like four turns or three turns without playing after playing this. Nova Shiru is a big brain deck as well. You ought to help one or the other. You gotta hit a token here, right? Please roll up. Fuck! Oh my god. For the love of god, man. Hit a token, please. By denying penance, you confirm your guilt! Can I do this if he passes? I need like 20 points if he passes here. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. 
Ah, uh, of course it hits this and still misses a one. Um. I think we just lead her and play ale. I need 20. Ale's 5. I need 15. Leader's 4. I need 11. This is 2. I need 9. 9 from 7 coins? Can I get 9 points? I think so. I think exactly. I think it's exactly it. One man's battlefield is another no! Right no! Oh, I forgot. No! I forgot to right click. Oh my god. Oh, it's a disaster. I forgot to right click in between my leaders and I use both leader charges that's game losing that's game losing I think oh no oh man oh. I think we just have to I think we just have to go for a 2-0 here and hope he drew really badly. I don't know what else I can do other than go for a 2-0 and hope he drew really badly. Okay, um, how do we buff here? I can buff, buff by 3 and buff by 4. I think it's like this to play around Milva. I, is it okay if I use all my coins? Then I can Hemelfart. That's probably fine. This way, this doesn't die to Milva. This way, this doesn't like this doesn't perfectly die to Milva. This doesn't perfectly die to Milva. Not Milva. Um, this card, Saboteur. Maybe they only play one Saboteur though. Possibly they just play one Saboteur. You could triple leader this. I think we let him triple leader this if he wants to. Oh, then we can Igor. Me. We could Igor. We have Hemelfart. Oh, we don't have a scribe in the graveyard? Shit. I don't want to scribe in the graveyard, that's bad. I also need my Hemelfart to get me a lonely champion. Be a shame if they were to have. I'll get it oh no, I played into the second saboteur! Fuck! I should have played this like far right. Or at least in between the two scarabs. Fuck! So painful. Uh That's bad. That's super bad. Okay, but both saboteurs are gone now. We don't have to worry about the freaking positioning anymore. We're going to worry about Shiru. Shiru's the th the big threat here. And also another problem, Igor becomes a 1, and then it makes it hit, so his Milva has really easy death flow. Is it my turn? I, heard more coins. I didn't know it was my turn! <laughs> Crap. Yeah, you can Igor a fly. I did not know it was my turn. Oh my god, I'm throwing completely, completely throwing with the Pirate's Cove double click, with the playing into Saboteur. Totally losing it. Riot! Are there any leaders? I trust no one. Never have. Time to switch decks after this. 
can only play these high stress decks for, for so long. He didn't actually kill this. Huh. Okay. Officials turn out. Off up the blood sleep. Is that this Saurus? But he has like a leader just to kill this and this at the same time. I think that's a really easy one for him. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be like one of your worst matchups ever because they have movement to shut you down and they have like ways to answer multiple things in one turn with the Milva. And like even even if you stick like your engines, they can just sh shiru a bunch of them potentially too. Mm, Why should I? The Simlis, so. Unfortunately, he didn't break anything. Yes, you! Have you made your offering? Who spilled my ink? Confess and be damned! This boosts by five? So you have the Shuri? I have no more scribes? Okay. Through the valley of monsters, I fear no evil. Black cat, hook nose, prominent wart. You know which. Yes, no you. doubt about it. Have you made your offering? Shiru goes to eight, twelve, fifteen. Okay, so I think it's out of range. It's just out of range. You. Yes, you. Have you made your offering? Now, what does he want to Shiru? Thinking if we want to click any of these. I don't think we want to click this. Clicking this is probably just going to send something into Shiru range. When currently it isn't. And we kind of want to click to combine with the Damnation. What do, I, what do I want to play on Damnation? We want to play St. Gregory on Damnation? How, and we need a 10 for that, right? So we can go... Wait, how many... What's St. Gregory? Wait, wait, wait. St. Gregory is... We need a 10 for St. Gregory. 10 for St. Gregory. So we we buff the Azar by 5 to get a 10, and then we Damnation to get St. Gregory. And St. Gregory does what? Boost self by 1 for each unit you control and gain a coin for each Firesworn card you control. Okay. Why aren't the Scribes boosting? They don't boost themselves. They give you coin. They give you 1 coin whenever you spawn a unit. We're only up 24. It's not that much. Oh. Oh, and I can't click this lonely champion again. Hmm. That's unfortunate. We can't click the lonely champion again. Abandon your false guns! I think it's still this, though, right? The righteous will endure. Uh, his Shiru hits. Can it hit a seven? Yeah, I can hit a seven. Can I hit an 8? Yeah, I can hit an 8. So I think we play around Shiru and just go super tall and hope that he doesn't have his heat wave. Plays Glorious Hunt. Okay. Maybe winnable? He needs 30-something points. That's a lot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bad card. Last card. Bad card. Last card. Bad card. Okay. That's not that good, right? We fucking won! <laughs> no heat wave. Oh no, I lied. No. 
Okay, wait, is it over though? That was only round two. I have Novograd? I have Siggy. Siggy's Siggy's not good, but it's okay. What does he have? He has Heatwave Frenzy Dao. And like verification. Okay. Um Fudge. Okay. Uh oh my god, no. No. What do I do? Okay, that's good. We gotta go for Siggy. I think we gotta go for Siggy. Okay. That was round two, yeah. What's our sequencing here? Heatwave verification? He's got a heat wave, a verification, potentially. And what do we say? Frenzy Dao. No Milva. What do you guys think we should play here? I think it's I think it's Fire Disciple first. And then Novigrad. And then Fallen Knight. But I could also see it being Novigrad and then Fire Disciple and then Fallen Knight. We don't have a scribe in our hand anymore. Why not Novigrad first? Because that makes us be able to click the Fire Disciple less one time. But, I mean, there's a chance that he, there's a decent chance that he kills the Fire Disciple as well. We need an infinite spender on the Novigrad. Oh, nice. Okay. Now what? Now what, chat? We definitely don't discard. There's no upside of discarding, dude. Or is there? The upside of discarding, if his last card is Frenzy Dao, is actually there is an upside of discarding. Knight click Novigrad. Yeah, I could see it. I think this is... We beat 14 points? We can't beat 14 points. Or we could if we get... To trade fist. Oh, infinite spender! Fire, protect us. We gotta go for this. Oh, be ashamed to let this beauty go waste. Oh my god! We actually won! <laughs> oh my god, we can't lose, baby! Holy shit, what a roller coaster of a game. I thought we were getting the I thought we were losing super hard. We misplayed like three times. We thought we were losing super hard. Then we thought we were winning the 2-0. And then we thought we were losing the game. And then we thought we were winning the game. And then we thought we were losing the game. And then we thought we were winning the game again. <laughs> the game losing mistake. Yeah, Jesus. I mean we got lucky that he didn't draw Heat Wave or like the meta deck plays Heat Wave. Curse of Corruption and Frenzy Dao, right? And we saw a glorious hunt. We didn't see any of those three cards. We didn't see the verification either. We saw a glorious hunt.